from all of the offerings from Wave 1 of Legacy, leave it to me to be most excited about the most assuming guy. That being Legacy Skids, and he's going to be our focus in comparison with the Thrilling 30 and a couple of other notes related to the Legacy Drag Strip and the Legacy G2 Laser Prime. I'll make those as well, but all of that, especially this guy, is going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. One, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, loud my baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below, also in the description down below. And if you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. And this is Legacy Skids. Now, I mentioned in the uh, intro there that I will make a note in the video about Drag Strip. I'm going to show something when we come back here. And I make a note about uh, the G2 Laser Prime. Very, very minor. I don't have him anymore. I've returned him to Maximal 10. But it's... You'll get it. Trust me, you'll get it. Um... The focus here is going to be on this guy, and we're going to compare him to the earlier Generation Skids. Now, to be fair, I was never really much of a fan of the Generation Skids. I didn't like the limited shoulder movement, and I'll talk about that as we go through. And the coloration was okay. The alt mode was okay, but I knew it wasn't quite right. I guess it would be if you were a comics fan. But me being a G1 boy, this was more what I was waiting for and looking for. That being said, there's a... Kind of, I think, a skids for you if you're an animation accurate person. And there's a skids for you if you're a toy accurate person. And this guy, obviously, is for the latter. How good is he? What do I really think about him? Did he live up to the hype and the expectations that I had for him? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And so here we are. And we're going to pretty much round off my look at the... Items that I'm going to look at from Wave 1 of Legacy uh, with Skids. And a big shout out to Ultra Megatronus. I really appreciate him uh, kind of hooking me up with this guy. So, we've looked at so far from the, the leader class, uh, the G2 Optimus, and back in Kingdom we looked at the Galvatron. In Voyager we've looked at the Bulkhead, and back in Kingdom we looked at Blaster. For the core class, we looked at Iguanas, and back in Kingdom, we looked at Rodimus, our hot rod. I'm not looking at the Sky Warp. It's just, it's... Core Seekers aren't my thing. I don't see the point of them, personally. Not that they're bad. It's just it doesn't work for me. And then when it comes to the uh, Deluxes, we looked at Dragstrip, um, who, I, he's all right. I expected a little bit more from him. We looked at Kickback, who I think is stupendous. And now this guy. Not planning to look at the RC, you know. I, I mean, if it comes my way, I will. But I'm not. I'm not planning on it because I don't think it looks like RC. But we'll see. Um, my plan is for Wave One to kind of conclude with this guy. Are we ending on a strong note? Well, we're gonna find out. But before we can get into this guy, you know, what we gotta do. We gotta look at that packaging first. And so, yes, indeed, here we do have packaging. Uh, of course, we don't have the plastic like in the window anymore. I like the plastic. I, I don't think that having just a window is asking too much, and it does kind of protect the, the guy inside. That being said, because it wasn't there is explicitly why I was able to touch and feel kickback and like the feel of the plastic. I, I, I was enamored by the tactile sense that that's what kind of caused me to buy him. So go figure. I do, however, like the look of the vehicle down here, and I like the look of our boy over here, and the close-up on his head is really nice head sculpt. Uh, over here we have the Autobot art for the side of the packaging. It does seem like that the Autobots have specific Autobot art, the Decepticons have specific Decepticon art. Everything here is a Wave 1, so I'm curious if this art will change and evolve with Wave 2, 3, and subsequently. On the back, of course, we have our... Um, uh, product images in both modes as well as the accessories that are there's a lot of them and they are weird we got ourselves some instructions and honestly i know a lot of people have complained about these being blue but i think that these instructions are fairly successful i followed these 
pretty darn easily. And the couple of parts where it wasn't quite clear, it was intuitive uh, like enough with this guy that it really didn't bother me. So decent instructions and the parts that kind of aren't exactly clear in here, I think, I feel on this mold, are generally pretty darn intuitive. Accessories wise, he comes with this weird blue Energon axe thingy. I'm holding on to a five millimeter peg. There's another five millimeter peg up here. There's a five millimeter port. I'm pretty sure that the very tippy top up here might be able to take a blast effect. I haven't tested that out to be fair, but basically, and I think there's uh, also ports on the side like here. So there's a lot of pegs and ports that I'm sure you can, you know, can use to connect the other pieces and stuff too. Uh, hopefully in the end, this, this winds up being some cool looking thing. You can put his other accessories on with this. <laughs> it's arguable if it looks good. He also comes with two silver blasters. Yes, I have them put together here. One is a double barrel blaster, the other is single. I think they're black and painted silver, if I'm not mistaken. They go together like this, or of course you can take them apart and have them be two separate blasters. So, you know, that's up to you what you want to do with that. And now here we are with the older generation skids. And the, of course, new Legacy One. I mean, this is the elephant in the room that we kind of got to talk about. Some people, I think, that are big fans of the comics might be drawn and gravitate to the Generation Skids better. I bought it. I was never a huge fan of the mold. I, I got it because I liked Skids. That's explicitly why I got it. And I do like the alt mode of the Generations one. But this is as far out as the arms go. And that articulation limit always killed it for me. Um, he's standing up quite well here, but that is a rarity. A lot of times he's been a bit of a struggle to stay stood up. I don't know. Some people like him, but he's never really been the skids for me. This was an example, much like the Kingdom Black Arachnia, where I got the character to have a representation of the character, but I was never happy with that representation for me personally. So I've been waiting a long time for a better one to come along. And I think we got possibly a better one here with the legacy we'll see as we go through. But that's kind of the elephant in the room. You gotta sort of pick your poison. If you're happy with the earlier one and that fits your bill for skids, or you're an, like a comics fan and that fits your bill for skids, then I, like, I can't argue it with you. And it's not that he's bad. I just wish the arms had or the shoulders had a wider limit. I get it, the molding and stuff, it's, it'd be hard to do and all that nonsense. Uh, I don't know why he's standing up so well today. A lot of times he doesn't like to, but he's doing it well today, so you know, be thankful for small miracles, I guess. So I'm gonna take him out of it. We'll, we'll see him in his alt mode a little bit later. And we have this guy here. I'm just gonna kind of bring him into the center a little bit more, and we're gonna kind of start giving this guy some grades. So I'm an animation accurate guy, as everybody knows, and this guy is not quite animation accurate. We're gonna kind of start from the bottom and work our way up. So the feet should be red, the sides of the legs should be blue, with even the red line. Um, the shins should not be black, they should be blue, with more of a, almost like a baby blue periwinkle on the knees. The thighs should also be blue. So the black and silver that's on these thighs is toy accurate, not animation accurate. I mean, fine, I guess. I'm not a toy accurate guy, so I wish that they were blue. To be fair, there are people who would say, hey, if you want a toy accurate version of Skids, get the Legacy. If you want an animation accurate version of Skids, get the Masterpiece. This one is a deluxe size, that one is a Voyager size, basically. So, kind of pick your poison. I'm not an MP collector, I'm not an MP guy, never was. I think that that Skids looks amazing, but I'm a mainline guy, so this is what I got. Would I go through painting the legs or the lower legs? Probably not. Some people would say, hey, why don't you strip the silver off the upper legs, because the upper legs are blue, that silver paint. I don't know if I'd go through all of that effort for skids. The pelvis with the black and red is accurate. The um, whole like torso section, even with the Autobot symbol, all that's accurate. The head is accurate. The windshield behind his head is accurate. The door wings are accurate, even with the red stripe. The um, hands should be red. The arms being blue is accurate. Uh, the tires and whatnot, like they're pretty accurate. The head is quite accurate. So, toy accuracy, 10. Animation accuracy for a guy like me, it's about an eight. Like it's it's got the skid silhouette and body type, but it doesn't, you know, the legs really are a bit different. Now that being said, I, I'm not hateful toward it because all of the blue might be too much blue arguably, so having it broken up like this, I'm okay with. 
like I said, if you really, really, really want that animation accuracy and you're an MP guy, go with the MP. So an A for the coloration. 10 if you're a toy accurate guy. Shout out to Input, because I know that he would probably give this a 10 million because of that one feature alone. Uh, the items, they can all go on either in his hand or there are ones on his forearm, so you can like always put that one up there, for example. I already showed how the two blasters go together. They're both five millimeter ports and they can go either up on the arm or in his hand as well. There are also five millimeter um, ports on the side of the legs and on the back here. And I think, yeah, down on the like toes of the feet. So he can take like fossilizers, weaponizers, that sort of stuff. Let's talk about the articulation. The head is on I'm going to say ball joint, looks up, down a little bit of a wiggle, uh, can go all the way around. The doors are on hinges, they can kind of open and close. The, we'll talk about the shoulders last. There's a waist uh, rotation, which is very nice. We have nice deep ankle tilt, really dig that. Uh, we have hips all the way, all the way? Pretty sure all the way. Maybe not all the way. Mm, not all the way, but pretty darn close to all the way out to the side. Uh, we have leg forward on, I'm pretty sure that's a universal. Uh, same back there, pretty tight, very nice. We, do we have a wrist? I don't, oh, we do have a wrist, nice. Uh, we have an elbow to 90 degrees, which I think is fine. We have a bicep swivel. Then we get to the shoulders, and the shoulders are kind of bonkers. Because, okay, so the shoulder can go up and down because this section here doesn't seem to really lock in. Having it down would be, honestly, a little more animation accurate because his arms were kind of low down on his body for some weird reason. But you can also get his arm way up over because of a very weird hinge here. Now, that being said, if you want the arm to go forward, there's like a a black false tire piece behind a, a rotating tire piece and that goes into this blue piece and gives you your forward motion. If your shoulder's down, well obviously your arm is forward at a bit of a weird angle. Now you can turn the bicep, but it is what it is. If it's all the way up, I mean, he can shield his face because it's all the way up. Um, it's exceedingly versatile but a very strange way of doing it. It seems like it's all hinges and swivels. I like it. It's very unique form of doing the shoulders. And some people might be frustrated and say, why don't the shoulders lock in? But I feel like that, at least on my copy, their tolerance well enough that they're staying in whatever position you put them in at whatever angle you're doing it. Like, they're not moving. Any way you do it, they are not moving. And I feel like it's probably a successful way of doing it. That being said, if the tolerance is off even a little bit, I can see these shoulders being a nuisance. They work, they're great, they're innovative, they're different, but they're only gonna work if you make sure to have uh, the tolerances like mathematically worked out absolutely correct. As it is, all the articulation is there that I could possibly, possibly want, and even then some because of these unique shoulders. I'm giving it a 10, I love it. So we have an eight, we have a 10 overall, a nine so far. Let's do the transformation. Now, a lot of people have said that this guy doesn't tab in all, uh, you know, all that well. He does, but you gotta be really specific with it because everything absolutely needs to be compacted to its nth degree and you've got to make sure everything is lined up just right. So it's a bit of a specific one. I, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to do this better than I did the drag strip one. I apologize about the drag strip one because I kept wanting to collapse his legs first and you really got to do the upper body first. I'm going to give, by the way, two updates here right now as well. I said that the uh, drag strip shoulder was limited in its outward mobility uh, because of the shoulder pads. And if you kind of mistransform the shoulder pad, you could get all the way out. What I didn't realize at the time is that you can actually just tilt the shoulder pad um, so that it's kind of like in a little closer to the head. And that gives you just enough clearance to get the shoulder out the whole way. So my criticism I made in the drag strip review about the shoulder pads is not altogether accurate. I still wish they had treated the shoulder pads better than they did. I don't know, bring them down on his back or something. But it's not as much of a hindrance as I thought it was. Also, 
Last Friday, I looked at the Legacy G2 Laser Optimus Prime and I said that the tanker trailer, when it was in trailer mode, couldn't stand up by itself. Yes, it can. I accidentally neglected to pull down a front stabilizer. It's red. It, it can stand up just as well as any trailer can stand up. So, you could kind of scratch those two recent criticisms because they were my own, they were, pardon me, they were my own error. This guy. All right, so we're going to begin by bringing out the tires on the side. I think they're out like that in package anyway, but you're supposed to be able to flip them down and under for greater foot stability. Once we got that out, we can, what will we do next? Um, I guess we can also bring those pieces down front and we're going to pick this up off of the back and bring up the front of the vehicle. Once we have the front of the vehicle up, uh, we can then, and I'm going to just get these out of the way for now, turn the tires. So bring the arm out then to the side and we turn the tires so that the tire is kind of facing the, the hood, the top of the hood, and we bring the arm down. So we are going to bring this out to the side, turn it so that the tire is at the top of the vehicle, bring it down. Then these are also going to turn because the bottom down here goes over a little black, let's see if I can show this, little black tab right there. What's interesting is that I find when I bring this down and want to tab it in there, it doesn't really want to do it. So what I've found I have to do is almost, when I get it all the way down, I almost have to adjust the shoulder up. It's really weird and hard to explain. But once I get these down and in, I'm trying to get them on over. I got this one on over. And I don't know if you noticed, but it's just like a couple of millimeters that you, the shoulder almost got to like nudge up ever so slightly to get it over. Why is that important to do? Because otherwise these doors will not be able to close. So you got to get that done with those arms right away. Next. We'll collapse the legs and get them together. Once they're collapsed, this peg goes down kind of between them and there are two, I'll talk about when we get there. To collapse the legs, we bring them forward and then this whole waist piece flips up. Okay, so we, we make sure that those arms are in. We brought the legs forward like he was sitting down and then we flip the whole waist up. Then we're going to Collapse the knee section and collapse the knee section. I'm going to put these together now. And now I start to kind of squeeze everything in together good and close. Make sure that all of that is down underneath there. This piece here will come back. And like I said, there's a round peg in there that kind of comes down in between the legs back here. And there's two little rectangular tabs back here that two rectangular ports go down over. I find one of mine does not like to necessarily go down, so I really kind of got to squeeze it um, quite a bit to, to make it happen. So I do all of that, get all of that down, make sure that I get there, all of that in and down. So yeah, you got to squeeze it just a little bit, but I, and some people, before anybody says like, oh, but there's clear plastic on here and the doors. Again, I mentioned this with Kickback. I find, unlike, for example, Studio Series 86 Jazz, I find the clear plastic here is thicker and far more robust. I don't feel any problem with it. I don't have any stress marks. I don't, nothing. It feels very, very solid. It's, it's good quality clear plastic. We close in the uh, doors on the side. And that's it, boom. But you gotta have everything absolutely perfect. Here we have Skids in his vehicle mode. And here we have both of our boys in their alt modes. Not gonna lie, I don't exactly remember what Skids' official alt mode was, but I know that when I got the generations, I was like, yeah, it's still cool that this is a very unassuming alt mode that could be parked in a driveway on my street. But it does feel a little sporty. It feels more like a hatchback. It's not hatchback. It's not exactly like the more like minivan, boxy type of look of the G1 to me. But I had no other skids. What are you gonna do? I said, at least it's blue with the red and the white, right? This rolls well. Again, the accessory storage is pretty lame. I did like the, the red on the tires though. So there is a charm to this. It's just that I didn't like it because I didn't like the difficulty with him sometimes standing and I didn't like the um, limitation of the shoulders, though I do like the shoulder pods. He does roll great and underneath it's pretty 
while looking um, kind of mold and bits and pieces. It looks like an engine, but it doesn't look like a robot. It hides it pretty well, so I actually really like that about this one. But it's obviously a very different take. I'm not a comics guy, so this one's not for me. I do like the black windows. I do like the black windows here, though. Keep that in mind. So we're going to move him aside and kind of get this guy in here a little bit more. I love the look of this alt mode. I really do. Again, it's too bad that the accessory storage is this pathetic, I guess. I don't need this on the side or this on the side. And I certainly don't need this on the top. Now you can, I guess, put the accessories in however you like. On the back, real plain. I wish we had tail lights. I wish we had some more detail painted back here. I think that's a shame. Uh, but there's a ton of detail on this guy in terms of paint. I mean, all of this being clear plastic is all painted, so I respect that. Hopefully it holds up. I do like that there's a molded in looks like edging detail for a gas tank cover gas cap but it's on both sides which i find strange uh we do have a nice grill done with the yellow headlights so i really like that i think the transformation is brilliant i really really do and i absolutely love it uh some people that have said oh i can't get it all tabbed in you got to just make sure that you got everything done really really perfect i think the transformation is a solid 10. he was getting a nine the transformation's a 10. Honestly, I think the legacy skids, though I would say he's probably $10 too much here in Canada, like instead of being, you know, $35.99 Canadian, and I'm using that as an average price, I think he's more like a $25.99 Canadian uh, offering. Instead of being $24.99 US, I think he's more like a 20, maybe $21.99 US. But he's quite excellent. On the whole, he's a solid 9.5. This is a fantastic skids. Plus, there's even now an upgrade kit, if you're so inclined, that gives him the little scooter thing that came with the real vehicle. We are supposed to store it on this. I'll never know. And here we are once again, and here he is, and I think this is my skids of choice. Now, again, to be fair, this is a toy accurate version rather than animation accurate. I would like to potentially do the custom work, but I really don't want to try to match that blue, so I might leave it the way it is. Some people will prefer breaking up the sea of blue with the silver and black. I totally, totally get that. Uh, there's an appeal, therefore, for sure. I don't have any stress marks on anything on mine. Um, the shoulders, they work great. If there's a tolerance issue and it's loose, I could see that totally ruining it. So it's very important that the tolerances are perfect there. There's an argument for getting the masterpiece. There's an argument for getting the mainline, depending on what exactly you're looking for. Some people that are big comic book fans will prefer to keep the generation skids. Not me. This is kind of what I've been waiting for. I wish it was a little more animation accurate, but this is what I've been waiting for. And I'm super happy with it. Just of interest and note, the point that I was trying to make about drag strip. These shoulder pads I had left up straight like this, but you can put them in and when you put them in closer to the head, the arm extends all the way out rather than, and it's not much of a difference, but there's a slight difference. So yeah, you can get it, you can get it. I still think these should have gone down on his back, but you can get it and it does make him a little bit better. I can't show the stabilizer on the trailer of the Laser Prime. I gave that back to Maximal 10. Sorry, but it's a stabilizer on a trailer. It is what it is. I digress. Back to this guy. I think the articulation is very interesting and innovative. I think that the um, transformation is brilliant and fun and enjoyable. Admittedly, the first maybe two times I did have trouble kind of tabbing in the hood or the roof section. That seems to have, uh, I've seemed to have finessed it a little bit more. It's a little bit easier now than it was because I think I just kind of worked it a little bit. Everything seems to tab in great now, but you do have to have a very, very specific. I think he's an absolute win, and I think he's one of the strongest from Wave 1 of Legacy, at least in my estimation. Maybe a little overpriced in Canada by about $10, a little overpriced in the U.S. by maybe 2 or $3, but quite good nonetheless. Let me know what you think about Legacy Skids. I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. Don't forget to also hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel, and especially don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you do make a difference, and I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, right here, inside the videos.